I want to talk to you guys today about some mental tools or mental perspectives, ways of looking at your life situation that will help you to be able to work harder. Because I think that for a lot of people today, the problem is not a lack of ideas or knowledge. Everybody loves to absorb fascinating, uplifting content. But far fewer people, by contrast, are actually dedicated to taking action and putting in the work. And I think this is a problem that afflicts a lot of people, regardless of whether you come from an affluent background or a disadvantaged background. Affluent people will feel entitled. They feel they should be handed everything so they don't work hard. People from disadvantaged backgrounds feel like they have no hope, no opportunity. They feel like they've been conned, cheated, so they throw in the towel. So deciding to work hard is a choice that everybody can make. It's a choice that you make where you are with what you have. And that's what separates the men from the boys, to just use a conventional phrase there. And also, your inability to shoulder a heavy load to manage stress, to manage complexity, is really going to be the only thing that dictates your level in life. It's something that you have to work on. So in today's video, again, some mental uh, habits and tools and ways of looking to help you deal with this. And we're also going to assume that you're, you've chosen something to work on, which is good. Because we all know that phrase that you have to work smarter, not harder. If you're just working really, really hard on something that's you know, maybe a bad idea or as something that's uh, um, too narrow or too unhealthy. I mean, I don't know. Um, just insisting to work hard no matter what doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to uh, entertain other ideas, take a step back and so on. Got it. We're, so we're assuming you've already picked something good and reasonable. Okay, tactic number one. You can ask yourself, would anybody that I know be willing to work this hard? If the answer is no, then you then the next thing you can tell yourself is, okay, well then logically, if I keep going like this, I'm going to be successful because I'm working harder than anybody I know. And if the answer is yes, other people around me would be willing to work this hard, they are working this hard, well then maybe you're not really working as hard as you think, and then you can decide what to do next. But this is a question that I've, I like to ask myself a lot uh, lately would be, who would do this? Who does this? Who would be willing to do this? Nobody I know. Okay, well then that gives me extra excitement and encouragement. I'm going to go do this thing. Okay, number two. Put aside the belief that what you're doing is really so hard and complex. Or the thing that you're about to do is really so hard and complex. Because our minds, we like to tell ourselves, we like to think that what we're doing is so difficult, it validates ourselves. But there's probably a lot of people in this world who are working a heck of a lot harder. And if they would see what we're agonizing about or sort of, um, you know, resting our laurels on, they would find that to be laughable. So interrog, you know, put uh, if you put that belief aside and just. Uh, try out the thing, get into it, you might find it's not really so hard. So you can interrogate that belief. You can find out if that belief is really objectively true or not, or if your mind's just playing games with itself because it wants to take life easier. You can get good at that. That's something you can practice. Interrogating those beliefs that pop up that are holding you back, and also putting them aside to actually get going, get moving, and find out if your those beliefs really hold up or not. Again, that has to do with the division between overthinking and taking action. Okay, number three, remember this quote, habits go through three phases, unbearable, uncomfortable, and then unstoppable. Hard work is just like that. Hard work is a muscle, it's something that you can practice, it's a habit that you can practice. People get addicted actually to working too hard, that's where the phrase, you know, workaholic comes in and that's why people sometimes get burned out because you can actually train yourself to in, in such a way that you can't stop working hard and that can be a problem so that goes to show you again that the human mind the human body it really is quite a programmable machine if you're having trouble working hard I don't think you're really gonna be in danger right now of being a workaholic or burning out 
you need to remember and to practice that hard work is a habit that you can start to practice and ingrain. You need to level yourself up a little bit with that insight. Okay, number four. Uh, there's a phrase that I, I believe it comes from the military, possibly the Navy SEALs. A lot of people attribute it to, to them. There's a phrase, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. This is a phrase I like to remember when it seems like there's too many things going on and I, I feel overwhelmed and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to handle everything. I remember this phrase and it calls to mind the idea of taking down targets one by one. You're only one man, you only have one weapon, you've got a lot of targets, you've got a lot of bogeys flying at you. The only thing you can realistically do to possibly survive this situation is take down one calmly and then the next and then the next and then the next and to not lose your cool. If you rush, if you get frantic, then those things can overwhelm you and you start making mistakes, you're floundering, you're kind of like dead in the water. So slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Slow yourself down, do that activity right, do it carefully, do it effectively and efficiently, and then move to the next thing. Clear your mind of all the other things for now. Well, prioritize first, and then clear your mind of the things that are not the top pr priority, and go down the list of the priorities. Number five, another cool phrase, a change is as good as a rest. This is also very helpful, and it was really a mind-opening insight for me when I first encountered it. We don't always need to rest. Sometimes we need a change of, of work. We need a change of what we're working on and the modality that we're working in. And you can section your days into different types of working modes in order to get more stuff done without taking incredibly long rests or incredibly distracting rests. Okay, so for example, for me, morning times are a great time to be creative and to produce things. In the afternoons, that's a great time for me to study and or exercise. In the evenings, this is a good time for me to do high quality leisure activities like reading, perhaps with my family or playing with my children or tidying up the house, things like that. So you can see I'm always working, I'm always pretty busy, but I'm doing different types of things that helps to keep me engaged. The next one um, on my list is you actually should take a break sometimes. Sometimes you feel really, really busy, really, really tired. You don't know how you could go on to that next thing, but you know that next thing gets needs to get done. There's a magic in just allowing yourself maybe a 15 minute break to do something totally unrelated. Sometimes in the evenings, for example, after dinner, I know I'm gonna need to put in another hour or two of work, let's say. So what I will do is just make a coffee, make a foot soak with some TCM, you know, traditional Chinese medicine, maybe grab a storybook and um, tell my, my daughter I want to read with her, just hang out on the sofa have my coffee, read a book, have some laughs, then clean up, you know, the foot bath or whatever. And I feel refreshed. I feel ready to rock and roll. Some people are good at power naps. That's another cool thing in the same vein. A power nap after lunch or even a power nap after dinner can really recharge you. Now, if you think, oh, that's going to throw off my sleep at night, then you don't understand power naps. You need to educate yourself around power naps and do them right. They shouldn't be that long and they can really supercharge you to get more work into the day and it won't mess up your sleep at night. So do remember to take rest as you need them. Another idea there would be to just go for a walk. Maybe call a close family member or friend for a quick chat and a laugh. It's incredible how recharging and refreshing that can be. Okay, and the last piece of advice is remember to praise yourself and reward yourself, especially as you get older no one's gonna really be your cheerleader anymore. People are cheerleaders to young students and children. They don't, they're never gonna give you the things that you feel you deserve. You need to get good at giving that to yourself. Your self-talk is important. Your self-praise is important. Buying yourself a reward from time to time for your hard work so that you have a, a physical, tangible symbol of your hard work. It could even be going out to a, a celebratory dinner or, um, you know, a new book. I think buying yourself something related to the thing that you're working on can be a good reinforcer. 
So like if you've, if you've done good with your exercise, buy yourself a new piece of exer exercise equipment or an exercise book or buy into an exercise program, uh, something like that. Um, I was trying to decode one of my final notes here, which is that, you know, far from thanking you or praising you or applauding you, other people are probably going to be feeling more and more insecure if you actually become more successful in terms of your ability to do much more hard work. And so you're going to find out that when people get insecure around you for this reason, they might actually try to get in your way and sabotage you because you're making them feel bad about themselves because they know that they're not working so hard. This is something that you can confront. This is something that you can educate other people around. You can tell them that I want us to come up together. I'm not in a competition with you. I'm in a competition with myself. I want us all to succeed. So let's see how we can help you out as well. Let's come up together. All right, so these are my tips. I hope they can help you to get better at working hard. I'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye for now.